Hey guys, welcome back. We are on to the third and final set of Jane Davenport watercolors. This is the Glitz C palette, so I'm very curious what this will be like. Um, looking, you know, from the sides, it looks like we have some really fun colors. On the back, she does have her swatches. It looks like we have a lot of greens in this one. So, as always, they are in these tiny little boxes. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, the easiest way is to just tear these things out because I have no intention of returning them, so might as well just tear the box. Like I've said in the previous ones, these little rubber nubbies, ooh, that one's totally off center, uh, which keep your thing from moving around, also keep it from sliding out of that box. So this one is like a darker teal color, and teal is my favorite, so I'm already in love. Let's pop it open, oh my goodness, oh there we go. <laughs> a little tight. So just like the others, it has a little mixing tray here. And then let's see what she says on this one. This palette of fine watercolors features two metallic paints, ooh, and ten glitzy hues. Use the reverse of this card for reference. So just like the other three, this is your swatch chart that does have the... Um, it's with watercolor paper. I do swatch this on top of swatching my big one. And as I had explained before, that is because it's, uh, I keep all my swatches in like a big thing on my craft table. Yeah, no words today, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, and then I still swatch in here because once you peel off these labels, it is just a white little tray and there's nothing else. So you can't really, tell what it is without swatching it and then keeping them in order. I am very curious to see what the metallic is because I had no idea there was a metallic one in here, two metallics. So I am gonna use my Kiritake Zig water brush. This is like the medium size one. Um, I find these work a lot better than my Captron. They're not that expensive. It's like 12 bucks or something for a set of four. So as I did with the others, I don't want to subject you to the pain of me fiddling around trying to get these off. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly unwrap these, and by quickly I mean painstakingly for like 10 minutes, but I'll get them all unwrapped and we can swatch these colors and see what we got in here. Okay, I got them all unwrapped. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in any of the videos is make sure before you unwrap them, that they are in the right order that's on the card. I have yet to come across to where they aren't, but it's still a good thing to double check because literally this is your only guide as to what is what. <laughs> so just an FYI. Let's get a move in then. The palette itself looks dark, but I don't know if that, you know, it doesn't always mean your colors will be dark. So let's grab some water spirit. That's like a um, definite seaweed color. Uh, Sylph. Some of these I'm probably going to say wrong. Apologies now. It's really pretty green too. And we'll compare them to all the others that I already have. I believe there are only three Jane Davenport sets. If there's a any more, um, I can't find them, at least of these palettes. I looked on her site too. That was Nareed, Nareed, I don't know. All right, Ariel. Ooh, I think this is gonna be red like Ariel's hair color. Very pretty. Frolicsome. burnt orange color, tresses, very light yellow. If you add more water to this, that would definitely be a very pretty pale color. Sea nymph. Pretty. Let's go 
a little more over here. Definitely want to compare these to my brights. Um, Enchantress. And this one does have a lot of green, that's for sure. Ooh, that is a very pretty, pretty green. I'm liking that one. All right, uh, Lorelei, I'm sure I said it wrong. That's pretty too. I know it looks similar to this, but it really isn't. They're close though, but they're not the same. Okay, so sea mist. This is a green, but I picture sea mist as a blue myself. It's a very pretty color though. Okay, flirtatious. These must be the metallics because so far nothing has been metallic. Oh wow, these take some extra water. So FYI, when you're wetting these metallics, they don't wet as quickly or as easily as the others. Okay, so flirtatious. This has got to be a metallic. We'll check it against the light once I finish. Um, alchemy. I do see the sparkle on my brush. But does the sparkle translate onto paper? Alright, so let's see. Oh yeah, you can see it. Maybe... Uh, See that sparkle? The shimmer, if you will. It's kind of like a coralish and then a yellow gold. Kind of odd choices for metallics, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there they are. Uh, definitely a lot of greens. I mean, that's definitely a seaweed color. You know, for being glitzy, you only got these two blues, but it's not bad. Um, some random colors there but let me grab my other swatch charts and then we can kind of compare all of those all three together so that would be what 36 colors now total and let's see how that kind of works out together okay so we have the glitz C we have our brights which I think so far are my favorite set and then we have our neutrals, which also came with the three primaries and a white and a black, which are an absolute must, including the gray, let's be honest, um, to change any of these up, lighten, darken, what have you. So overall, pretty good selection of colors. Let's see, when it comes to purple though, so she only gives you two purples out of all three sets. Purple is not a big deal. You can make purple, <laughs> so not going to complain. Uh, yellows. Okay, so we have this light yellow here, and then we have Buzzy here. And that's pretty much it for yellow, like genuine yellow. And then like for orange, you get mango and vitamin C. And then you kind of have this burnt orange color here from the C. Let's see, reds. So we do have a good selection of reds. So we have this Ariel one, which is a dark, rich one. Then we have this apple. I forgot about this Kiss Kiss color, which is really close to frolicsome. Just slightly darker. Um, okay, so apple. And then we have ladybug, which is kind of red violet, but still pretty good selection. Um, Let's see, blues, we have our Nayweed, however you say it, Sea Nymph. We also have Butterfly 70s Eyeshadow Ink, which is a dark indigo, and then Blueberry. So tons of blues to work with in this set, that is for sure. And then for our greens, this is where most of the greens came in, was with the glitz. I mean, you've got all of these greens. And then the brights also have these two greens. There were no greens on the neutral. But, I mean, that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven greens. Now, you can make green. So, um, 
In a way, that's kind of almost overkill on the green, especially because green is a pretty easy color to mix and make. I would have rather seen some purples or pinks, personally, but that's just me. Oh, I forgot about Frida. That's another red. Pink-wise, you have Best Friend and Fairy Tale, and that's about it. <laughs> but pink, again, just mix some red with some white, you got pink. Um, and she gives you white, so you can make your pinks, but it's basically, your pink will be based off of the red, so you could work with apple, ladybug, I mean, you could even turn this into a lighter pink, it'd be more red-violet, same with that one. Remember, watercolors are mix-friendly. You can blend and make whatever the heck you want. You can make mud. <laughs> um, try not to, but it happens. For their neutral colors, um, you know, we've got, well, the neutral set. Um, buff and spice, cocoa, sand, all good colors. Honestly, brown is one of the easiest to make because you can make it by accident, just mixing the wrong colors. <laughs> so... Like I said, making mud is easy. But I do like that she included some of these more neutral ones if you wanted to do that. I mean, this is skin tone, perfect for skin tones, but you can use these for flowers and accent. You can add a little pink, make it a little more peachy, add your, you know, there's so many things you can do here, guys. Um, let's see, what color haven't I colored, covered? Not colored. I think I got them all. I mean, you do have the one gray. And then, yeah, you have these two metallics. Honestly, I'm not very impressed by these. Um, the Kiritaki and Kaliro, however I say them, um, are way better. I mean, these do have some sparkle, but it's not, it doesn't even compare to the other metallics and glitter ones out there. So honestly, if I had one um, complaint about these Jane Davenports, especially because these are expensive boutique kind of, you know, watercolors. I think she should have just done away with these metallics, um, to be honest. I Maybe come out later with a whole metallic palette. That would have been more fun. Um, but these are pretty weak metallics compared to the others out there anyway on the market. Um, she could have totally supplemented these, given us another purple. Um, Maybe even some more pinks for uh, those of us who are lazy. I think we have plenty of blues and greens, though. I mean, so I just think these two are kind of... I don't know. They're there. Some people will like them, but they totally could have been something else. But overall, the glitzy one isn't bad. Um, I did have someone ask if these are artist grade. So the Jane Davenports are artist grade. However... I wouldn't go and say, there's so many grades to artist grade. Are we talking beginner, intermediate, or are we talking like straight up pro level here? Artist grade is kind of a confusing term. These are used by artists. They are, you know, an artist grade one. It's not like student grade. Oops, I got some mess on there that I'm going to have to clean up. But I would put these more beginner, intermediate. Um, only because they aren't as high-end as some of the more expensive artist-grade ones you can get that are, like, a lot better quality. So, but everyone is different in their opinions and what is good and what is bad. I mean, you can take a freaking Crayola set of watercolors and make something pretty. You don't have to spend a ton of money. <laughs> so, that's kind of, you know, it's like tomato, tomato. What, what do you look for? I really do want to get my hands on more of the... The fancy schmancies with the honey used to uh, bind everything. Um, I can't believe all the things they've come out with with watercolors. But overall, I mean, considering the pigments, um, the cute little ability to transport these, you know, and then just overall the thought of how she had the nubs on there that's always appreciated i do have sets with no nubs so they just slide <laughs> if i go to mix them so i mean they were made well the watercolors themselves are beautiful i do hope she makes um some more sets um these kind of ranged in price on amazon uh, and i can't recall which is what i know they ranged from like 18 to 22 dollars but it's really not bad. I mean, it's under two bucks per pan. So 
I'm not too upset. But yeah, that is the Glitz C set, and that rounds out the rest of the all three of them. So now I have 36 Jane Davenport's to play around with. She makes markers. She makes all sorts of things. So I'm sure I'll end up buying some other stuff in the future. But let me know if you have this set or other Jane Davenport's and what you think of them. And then until next time, guys, take care.